that? So the AR drone is a, it's a great product um, put out by a, a French company called Parrot. And uh, I had seen them in the past before, but never really driven one or flown one, I guess, uh, or, or touched one or anything, never been close to one until my friend Steven and I had this idea for, for the hack that, that um, we were gonna, gonna buy them, figure out how to fly them on our own, and then try to take things to the next level. In the past, I, I, uh, I was working in medicine and had the idea to put, put voice recognition together with, uh, with medical visualization, so I did that uh, maybe a month ago, and that was really interesting. But now, rather than, than working in medicine, my friend Steven's actually a former army captain, so we're exploring different ways that you might use a drone in the battlefield. So uh, what, if, what if an individual so a soldier could send a drone ahead and scout for him, rather than uh, run to risk his own life by going into that tunnel or into that cave. So you'll see how we're putting um, voice control together with uh, visual recognition to make this drone fly on its own and be kind of a, a pet for the, the soldier. Many challenges ahead. Number one challenge, uh, can we read the camera, like at all? Number two challenge, once we have the data, um, what do we do with it? Number three is, can we recognize the judges' faces? We'd love to be able to, to do facial recognition on the judges and say, you know, target identified, you know, Bradley Horowitz or something, but we'll see. I've been coddled. You know, a lot of the younger generation of programmers grow up with the tools will take care of a lot of these low-level issues for you. And, you know, you use, uh, you use Xcode, you use Eclipse, these, these high-level IDE environments will generate your make files for you. Now that we're writing them by hand, it's getting a little bit more difficult. This is, this is vital. Basically, if we can't, if we can't get the camera feed up, then um, we're limited to a voice recognition driven drone and uh, not a, uh, what do you call it, not a drone that will be able to fly itself, not a drone that can look around an environment and identify a face and identify a person. Yeah. So it's bad. It is 821 and uh, man, uh, things have not been going well. Um, I was hoping that, that we could uh, get the camera e uh, feed in from the drone into the Python programming language and do all sorts of cool stuff with that. Teach the drone how to, how to fly itself around, uh, recognize faces. Um, but we're stuck in C-Land. We're stuck in the low-level the low level binary code. It's now nearly midnight, um, and we had, a, we had a major crisis during the first half of the day. Um, we weren't getting anywhere. We've made a breakthrough. So hopefully we can get everything together. And I guess I'll, I'll show you where we're at. Um, Real quick update, Steven is uh, training the voice model right now, so you might see him huddled in the corner, uh, microphone up to the computer saying, you know, fly up, fly down, turn around, whatever. We'll use that to train the voice recognition model. And then I've got uh, the camera feed just about there. So if we fire up the, the app, I'm actually building on a sample that comes from the manufacturer where we can see a live camera feed on the screen of what the drone here is looking at. So you can see my feet in front of the drone, uh, kind of walking around. So that's the drone's point of, point of view. And then here in the bottom right, this is the, um, the output from the program. So, but do I have this? Okay, dude, I do have this hooked up. So I can now take off with the drone and again, do another flight around the room. Although it looks like, oh, it looks like my controls are a little bit miscalibrated right now. I have a partner. Um, Steven Jung, uh, great guy, he's from San Diego, I'm from New York. Um, I've actually been helping Steven pick up code on his way to jump into the startup. He's uh, got a military background, uh, worked in finance for a long time, now he's moving in, into high tech. And, and so we're kind of, I guess, consummating our uh, relationship here at the Hackathon. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, right. I've been, to, I've been to four Disrupt Hackathons, I think. I've been to San Francisco 2010, uh, New York 2011, New York 2012, and now San Francisco 2012. As you can see here, we have uh, some of, of our lunch still standing. That is going to be probably a 4 a.m. snack. Right now, right now we're doing a full end-to-end -end test. We're, um, we, have, um, we have our sound model in place. We've tested it with a microphone. Uh, right now we just need to make sure that the voice commands are coming into the drone autopilot. And if that's working, we're going to do a test flight with voice control. We have 15 minutes on the clock and counting. I, I think we might actually make it. Uh, losing confidence, but uh, we'll see, man. Got to, got to give you your best. Run over and tell them, man.
Get it? Yes. <laughs> so uh, we barely just made the deadline. We've got 151 hacks we're gonna show you today and each presenter uh, or group of presenters has 60 seconds to present. Right now, we're kind of refining our pitch. We're trying to, to get it to the point that we're gonna be proud of it. Yeah? Okay, Mike me, please. Who's next? Can you go next? Uh, no. You don't already have All right, great. Um, the frightening truth is that drones are a reality. But as the average army ranger knows, often when you need them the most, they're too far away and maybe in someone else's hands, which is why we built Quadro, the personal drone, a fully real-time voice recognition engine for Quadro. So Steven, without his hands, can give it flying instructions using only his voice. And uh, this is a fully offline voice recognition model. Looks like we're getting a little out of control. I might need to bring it forward. Sorry about that, guys. But this is a fully offline voice recognition model. So one more time. All right, we're getting a malfunction here, but not only have we been built, built voice like I, I'm devastated. Well, not devastated. I, I'm disappointed, right? Because, um, because we, it was a roller coaster, right? In the, the, the beginning of the hackathon, the first day, it looked like it looked like we weren't going to get anywhere, and then we had a rally right around, you know, just before midnight, maybe like 9, 10, through midnight. And uh, trucked on through the night, Stephen and I, and uh, we got it to the point where the voice recognition was working, where the vision was working. We had everything working, um, but when we got on stage, it was some sort of fluke. Uh, something, something fell apart, and I couldn't, you know, diagnose it, you know, in 30, in what, 60 seconds on stage. So we had to, to take what we could get. What really is going on here is just the level of complexity of the project that we undertook is on the higher side of things. And not to take anything away from any project out there, but certainly one small thing out of all the many things that we had to put together to make this thing actually work, uh, I'd say it's still a win. The two runners up that get to go on stage and present for about a minute at Disrupt, right? On Wednesday at on Wednesday, uh, is Heat Data. And Autopass? And Oct Octopus? Octopus. Uh, octopus. Octopus spelled very so strangely. So you guys can come up? Come on down! <laughs> The winner of this year's mm. this year's hackathon in San Francisco 2012 is we should just do this. Live bowl. Live bowl. Live bowl. Woo! We did good. Um, next time I want to do great. 